atmosphere is changing now. Your worship changes the atmosphere for the spirit of the Lord. Come on, declare that tonight. The evidence is all around. For the spirit of the Lord. For the spirit of the Lord. with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason, Lord. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds Come on, let them surround you. Say overflow. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. miracle here tonight I need a miracle come on let's sing it a miracle can happen now you got to believe it tonight for the spirit of the Lord let's sing it one more time come on a miracle can happen now come on sing it a miracle can happen now for the spirit of the Lord for the spirit of the Lord evidence here tonight. Come on, the evidence. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord, that the Spirit of the Lord is here. It's here tonight. It's here tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
first of all, right now, I just want to, I want to bind confusion. I feel the Lord just put that in my heart. Just bind confusion. There is no confusion in Christ Jesus. The devil's confused, not God. So we bind that right now in the name of Jesus. And I just want to say over the church that the work in Poland is not over yet. There's a continued work that's going to happen that we're going to, we're going to work as a body to do some powerful things there. And our prayers will never cease to stop and pray for Poland. I also want to lift up the fathers today. There are fathers that are, have broken hearts right now. They're broken over things that they see in their family, their children. Just brokenness. And I, I just want to ask those fathers, put your hand on your heart as God begins to work in the four chambers of your heart and bring some healing. Because it's not, how long, Lord, will I have to suffer these things that concerns me? God said, I'll have mercy on whom I will have mercy on. And if you would, the Lord would say to the church and to the men, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And he says this, as you're waiting, stay busy for me. That's waiting on the Lord. Because some of you, it says, I don't want to serve. I'm having a hard time serving the Lord because God hasn't answered my prayer. In fact, these trials got worse. Well, we rebuke that right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke that mentality right now in the name of Jesus. God is doing a work that you know that your God can work in the darkness. When you can't see what he's doing, he's working. I think there's a song called Tremble. It talks about that. He's working in the darkness. He's working where in places we can't see. So, Father, we thank you, God, for that prophetic word. And I pray that fathers would be healed from the burden of their children, of their family. That that weight will be lifted off of them now in the name of Jesus. I just want to pray for every lonely person that's going through loneliness. I mean, I'm talking about loneliness, okay? Not that, you know... Not that they went to Poland and came back. No, not that kind of lonely because you know someone's coming back. I'm talking about people that nobody comes back and nobody visits and nobody calls. I'm talking to that person right now. God's healing you right now of that loneliness. And he's also giving you an instruction. And he's saying, be a friend to somebody. Step out in faith and stop saying you're lonely when there's a lot of other lonely people that need your attention. Am I right, sister? I'm hearing from God right now. I'm telling you. You might even feel a wind of the Lord pass through you right now because his presence is here. His presence is here. Just, and thank you, Pastor, for giving me a little time right now as the Lord is, is speaking to the church. He's given instruction. And he tells that lonely person, I've seen every tear that's come down your eye. I've seen those pillows that are saturated with tears I've seen them and even children might even go through this but God is there God is you're never alone God is saying I'm, I'm you're not alone I'm with you and that's why you stand today because you haven't been alone my presence has been there and I assure you that I'm going to be there to the end of time so, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for speaking to our hearts and putting, helping us put our trust in you, Father, and helping us have hope in you to do the work, Father, to finish the work that you started. And you said in your word that you would complete it. So, God, we trust in you, Father. Come on, church. Say, I trust in the Lord. I trust in the Lord, I trust in the Lord to meet every need that I have, everything that I present at the altar. Come on, throw it at the altar. Go like this. I throw it at the altar. There, I lay it at your feet, Jesus. All my problems and all my woes. And just, Lord, you take, you take, you take these things, God, that concern me. We give them to you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen.
Pastor Fernando. Oh, praise the Lord. So glad that you came out on a Wednesday evening. This is a very special service. Our, our missions trip, all of our, our missionaries that went to Poland, they're back with us this evening. How many are looking forward to hearing from them? And we've been praying for them all week long, every day of the week. And, and uh, I, I, I said something. I shared it with one or two of them. I told certain members of the team that went to Poland, I said, it's going to be a life-changing event. We hear that a lot around church. So it's kind of like life-changing, life-changing, life-changing. It's a life-changing event. Not only were lives changed there, you're going to hear about that, but also those that went from this church and came back, I believe they're coming back a little different than when they left. Just inspired, used of God. It's just so tremendous. So I'm excited. And uh, so rather than preach this evening, we moved our preachers back one week. And we're going to um, have Pastor Joe Cavan come on up. And he's going to help us out in uh, getting the team to just give us some reports and let us know what's going on. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. If we can have uh, the whole Poland team come up here. And we're going to sit up here. We're going to bring the chairs out. I thought the way we'd do it, we'd all sit up here and kind of share our experiences. And I first wanted to start off by saying thank you to everyone who donated to any of us to get out there. It really was life-changing, like, like Pastor mentioned. Yes. Thank you. We'll pull all eight out. Amen. So let me give you a brief uh, overview while everyone gets up here and sits down of why we were there for. I think most of you know, but we went to Warsaw, Poland. That was, that was where we flew into and kind of the primary spot of where we were. Um, we went out there primarily to, to minister to the, uh, the um, Ukrainian refugees out there. You guys know that there's a war going on out there. And uh, in Ukraine, the men are forced to stay there uh, once they hit the age of 18. So from the age of 18 to 65, every man needs to stay there, unless there's extenuating circumstances. If you have three kids, you're allowed to leave. If, you're, you, know, if you have medical conditions or some kind of illness, um, they'll let you leave. But aside from that, the, the men have to stay. So a lot of the women, the children left without their husbands, without their fathers, and there's one train out of Ukraine, and it, it dumps you off in Warsaw. So there's a lot of Ukrainian refugees there. And the main pastor that we kind of worked with, his name is Anton, a great, amazing guy. He came from one of the Ukrainian churches where most of the senior pastors in that church were, were persecuted out there. Most of them died. He fled with his family. And, and relocated, and if you could picture how Praise Chapel works, he's like the Larry Neville that's starting over in, in Ukraine. So that's like the mother church. And we were really, uh, Bruce was working with him. So our whole trip out there was working with some of the, the little churches, you know, like, like I say smaller churches, but off of that, the branch, branch churches. Um, so we had the whole trip planned out. We flew out there, it was Wednesday? We got there Tuesday. Got there Tuesday. We, we were ahead nine hours, so we've been thrown off this, this whole week. But got there Tuesday night. Um, Wednesday, we, we had an event at night at one of the, uh, the churches in Warclaw, which was about three and a half hours, supposed to be three and a half, four hours away. It took us about six hours to get there with traffic and everything. Had an event there at one of the churches, and what we do is we'd provide money. Um, so the church, you know, we were working with those churches. They would, they would buy food with the money that we supplied them and kind of package up some meals, and, and the whole idea was to kind of get the unsaved people. Get the, we, we had to give them something to, to get them in the church. Um, so the first night, and I'll let everyone kind of share the stories of the individual nights, but just as the overview, first night we were at the church in, in Warclaw and uh, had 
you know, an amazing time there. We'd have worship every night, a couple testimonies, um, and then we'd pray for people. And then uh, usually we'd end up with the pastors, with, with some of the church members, and, and we'd have fellowship and a meal after the fact. Um, we stayed there in Warclaw that, that night. That was Wednesday night. Um, Thursday we had, and same thing, one of the other churches in, in Lodz, Lodz, however they say it, a uh, little different, um, but same thing, uh, same type of service. It was very powerful every service. Um, the next day was uh, a free day, actually. We had one free day. We had some driving to do uh, to get back into Warsaw. And then Saturday, we had a big youth event. The youth there, it's not like our youth here. Their, their youth event is from age like 16 to 35, 30, 35. So it was a wide range, huge, big move of God there. A lot of prayer, a lot of salvations. I think there was a lot more salvations than actually came forward because they're with their friends and, and everything else, you know. But a lot of them were raising their hands. They just didn't, didn't come down. Um, great, great service there. And then... Uh, Sunday, we were at the mother church, so we had the service in the morning. Um, our team, our worship team got to play there, and we prayed for people, um, prayed for, we, there was a lot of salvations there as well. Um, again, very, very powerful move, and, uh, and, and that was it. Monday, we had a free day, and we all took a drive, it was about three and a half hours to Auschwitz since we were in Poland. Um, very long trip, but very sobering. Uh, trip to be able to see that so I think we're all blessed to just be able to see that while we're out there and have that free day have that free time Um, so I thought once I give you the overview of what it was we'd go around and each kind of share like our most memorable times um, how it's impacted our life and and really how it changes us moving forward in the church so yeah yeah we could do that since we're all out of order um, so yeah, so we could just go through and just share those, those kind of three questions. Okay, so I'll, I'll start it off and then I'll pass it to Brian and then I'll skip over me since I'm kind of moderating this thing. Um, so, you know, for me, obviously, and I, I shared this, we made a couple lives, if any of you guys watched, we did some lives, it was like 5.30 in the afternoon here for you guys, but we were so messed up with time that... We all ended up in one of our hotel rooms at like three, four in the morning, you know, just laughing, having a great time. And, and we hopped on a couple lives and shared some experiences. But one of the biggest things for me is, is obviously like Jamie's 14 years old. I don't know how many times I'll get to do this with her. So this was a super special time, super special trip for me that I, I was just able to be there and be a part of, of this trip for her, you know. Um, but other than that, I mean, every day, was was very powerful. I, I think the first night, the first uh, church that we went to in Warclaw, it was just, you could feel, it's different praying for people out there. You just feel the need. Like they're, they're, they've lost everything. And it's, it's so sad. You know, as soon as we started prayer, I remember someone grabbing me and just taking me to somebody who couldn't walk, an old elderly lady, and then praying for her and the language barrier, but it didn't matter. Uh, we had an interpreter with us pretty much the whole time, but you could just feel their pain. You know, it was, it, it was so hard. And, and they felt our prayers, even if they couldn't understand, even if it wasn't translated. And they felt that, that power and that belief. Um, every service kind of took a different change. And, and the Holy Spirit was just moving differently each night to, to whatever the needs were of the churches. So, again, I think that was my most memorable time there. I think the free times were, were awesome. Uh, Auschwitz, like I said, was, was sobering, but it was great to be a part of. And I think another big, big thing from this trip was just the bond that, that we all got together was, there's a lot of long car rides where, you know, we're stuck in the car together. And for me, this was, I've never been on a missions trip, but it reminds me of, of, a strike team, like going on a brush fire, kind of, you know, we've got assignments, we're there to do a mission, but we're stuck with a group of people, and we get to know each other real good, and there's some really heavy moments, heavy times, and, you know, a lot of us would joke and kind of mess around on the off times, but it created those such a strong bond, like I said, we were up till three or four in the morning, a lot of nights, the majority of us got, you know, got really close, and, and, and to me, to take it back here, 
for me, it just encourages me to keep doing that with people because, you know, we have, we have a tight group here that does so many things in this church and we get busy and we have busy lives outside of here, but really, you know, slowing down a little bit and, and just being set apart from all that, it's, we are all family here. And it just, it feels like it sometimes, but once you have that separate time together, you know, those real conversations, like I really consider all these people up here family, you know, and it's, uh, it was an amazing trip and I was, I was honored to be a part of it. For me, I, first of all, I want to thank everybody that um, was able to help me get there. Um, without you guys, um, the trip doesn't happen for me. And um, I know there's a few people up here, a few people aren't here, a few people outside, but um, I won't name everybody, but you guys know who you are. Um, without your support, and it's just prayers and everything as well, but without your financial support, a lot of us don't make it. I know I don't make it without you guys. So I just want to say thank you to the Firehouse family that, that did help. I, my biggest, the impact was like the first couple nights for me, the biggest. Um, he talks about the, they hungered for, for God, mm. where I think sometimes we may, and, and I, I hate to say, but we, we, what's the word I'm looking for? We, we, we come and it's, a, it's routine for us. We come Sunday, we come Wednesday, we come and where they actually are hungering for the, for the Lord. And like they said, the first, first night we were there, you can see like there's language barriers all through. And the interpreter can only be in one spot. So when we're praying for people, they, we know they don't understand a lot of what we're saying, but you can feel that they're receiving it. Um, the second night we were there, um, I, as typically, I gravitated toward the children. I went to the child the, where the children's table was at, and I started coloring with the kids. I don't know if you guys saw pictures. I had stickers on my face. They thought it was hilarious, you know. Um, but it, it is, it's impactful that that they hunger for it. Like I said, we, myself, I've been here for 15 years with Pastor. I don't have that crazy backstory of drugs, all that stuff. We found him realistically by chance. Was we were getting married. I don't know if you guys any know my our story, and um, it, her, my wife's aunt happened to work with him and says, "I got this Pastor," and that's how our journey with Firehouse started. Um, I was talking to Baruch and, you know, it's, it's not, I look out in the crowd of everybody that was there and I realize that, you know, not my life could be possibly how they, how theirs is. Not everyone's going to come to the Lord the same way. Um, but we're there and that's, the, that's the key. Um, as he was saying, they do the youth, the youth movement out there is huge. Um, the youth are highly involved. Um, that youth service was amazing. Um, the Sunday service was amazing. I had I, I had the fortunate part of having an interpreter sit next to me and it kind of spoke to everything. Um, we did sit in one night and I was letting them know, telling them like, you know, I don't want to be, I've been in the church 15 years. We've done a lot of things in the church. Um, right now, I, you know, I'm the guy that sits in the back and I want to be more than that to, you know, everybody here. Um, I don't want to be that scary guy that sits in the back and making sure everything goes right. Um, and we did learn about each other more. And I look at the looking at the panel, and I actually know Baruch better than most of them before we went on this trip. Um, but I got to know Rudy more. We got a little bit more about everybody here. Um, you know, me and Christian spent nights yeah. together. You know, in our room. You know, see, so, so, yeah. So, you know, we were seeing who could snore the loudest, obviously. Um, but coming back, I just want to. I feel like I just need to do more here. I need to get to know everybody in these seats, you know, a little bit more, not just a high by, you know, I'll see you next Sunday, see you Wednesday. Um, but again, like I said, the movement over there is is real, is is definitely um, the hunger there is 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 real, and they need the help, they need the prayers, and going forward, I would say let's just keep praying for them. Thank you. Um, just want to thank everybody also, like Brian did, uh, for everybody who helped and supported me uh, to get in there. Um, I wasn't sure I was going to go this time. I, I had signed up like in the first like initial group that was like, yeah, I'm willing to go. And then I just 
my finances were just hit this year. Uh, probably more than I've ever had financial struggles. And um, I told I told everybody, I even told Pastor, I was like, Pastor, I'm not going to go. Like, I'm not, like, it's just not going to happen. And I kind of just, I didn't even show up to the first meeting. Uh, Roxy's like, hey, where are you at? And I'm like, uh, I'm not going to go after all. Like, the, the very first one. And, oh, I didn't show up to any of the meetings, I guess. <laughs> I was trying to help, oh, no. I, I, I discounted myself. I counted myself out. I said, no, it's not going to happen. Uh, there's no way. Um, I'm, I got this to pay. I got that to pay. And, and I, I just said, God, like, if it's not you, then I'm not going to go. Like, it's just not going to happen. And um, all, <laughs> all along, I still renewed my passport. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, if it happens, it happens. And if, it, if I go, I go. And it just seemed like God was, like, almost asking me, like, do you want to go? And I'm like, yeah, God, I want to go. And uh, I'm like, you know, the last time, okay, here's the background. Nicaragua, I was supposed to go to Nicaragua, and my passport got rejected. And I was like, Lord, like, I don't owe child support or nothing. Like, man, like, <laughs> why did it get rejected? And, and it, it didn't happen for me. And I was like, okay, Lord, maybe that door is closed. Maybe you don't have this for me anymore. Maybe I'm not supposed to do missionary work. I went to a missionary first time when I was 19 years old. And I was like, okay, God, for the next 10 years, I'm going to do missionary work. And for the next 10 years, nothing happened. I didn't go on any missionary trips, any long-term ones. I did, like, short ones to, like, different churches and stuff, but I just preached at those churches. And it didn't happen. And I was like, okay, God, maybe, maybe it was all me. Maybe it was all my dreams that I wanted to go on missionary trips, and it was never you. And so when, like, this started happening, I just said, okay, God, maybe, maybe it was me. Maybe it's all in my head and my dreams. And I said, okay, God, like, if, it's, if I'm going to go, it's going to be you. It's going to be you. It can't be me. It can't be me. And he opened that door. And some people help, helped me, uh, get, you know, financially and gave towards the trip. But I said, okay, God, if I'm going to go, there's a reason. And uh, I pinpointed four different reasons why I was there. Um, one reason was to reach the youth, the young people. I had a chance to talk to many of the young people there. One particular guy, uh, Stuart, who led the night of the, um, of the young people night, whatever, young, youth, the youth conference, sorry. Um, and it's funny because he was telling me, he's like, hey, how did it go last night? I was like, it was good, man. Had a good time. And he was like, can I share something with you? And I said, okay. And he was like, I wanted, I wasn't sure I was going to do this. And I almost gave up. And I'm like, what do you mean? We begin to share and talk. And he was like, I almost didn't do the youth conference. Uh, for some reason, I was like, maybe, maybe I don't have the impact that I want to make. And, and, he, and, and he was kind of counting himself out. And God gave me a word. And I gave it to him. And he was like, man, like, you don't understand. I told God, after this conference, I'm done. He tells me this. He's after this conference, I'm going to do it. And he's like, I'm done. I don't want to do ministry anymore. I don't want to do this. Because he said he didn't feel like he was making the impact. I said, that's often the truth when it comes to ministry. We often think that we're not making the impact. And I gave him a word from the Lord. I began to cry with him and just really weep with him and talk with him. And he says, you know what? I, I told him like this. It's like you're in a soccer match. I wanted to give him his point of view. You love soccer. You're in a soccer match. And you're telling the coach, take you out of the soccer match. I don't want to play anymore. And, and the coach is God. And he's saying, no, no. You're the one supposed to be in that soccer match. You're the one supposed to help lead the team. You're the captain. You're taking yourself out of the game. And he, and he was like, that makes so much sense. To, to them, that makes sense. It's like, you ever see those guys, they're like, okay. And it's like, they're, 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 uh, they're substituting. Well, that's, he was like, substitute me out. Take me out. Take me out. I'm done. I'm tapping out. And when we got to praying, he said, God spoke to me. Your words, God spoke to me. He's, I was telling God this morning that I'm done. And I said, Lord, that's you. That's you. You knew what he needed. I didn't know. I, I thought he was like the leader. I was like, bro, you killed it last night, this and that. And he's like, no, I, I'm struggling. I, I didn't know if I was going to do this again. And so that was one. And then um, 
I gave a word to one of the pastors that God put on my heart. And uh, in the same way, I didn't know what he needed. I just knew what God was telling me. And Brother Rudy confirmed it later on at the, at the dinner that we had with him. And it was exactly what they were going through. Some things that God was putting on my heart to share with them, that happened. And then a couple more times I got the chance to pray with people and just give out. And I just want to thank the Lord because it's not us. It's God. It's never us. And the moment we make it about us is the moment that we get in the way. And I just had to remove myself, remove my, uh, my dreams, my visions, the things that I've wanted, and just say, God, it's, it's you or it's nothing. And so I think in doing that, and I believe in doing that, God used me in certain allocations in certain ways to, um, to give out. And so that's what my prayer was. God, um, pour into me so I can pour into others. And so... Oh, yeah. Uh, me and Rudy spared, uh, shared, spared. <laughs> Sorry. Me and, uh, uh, by the way, me and Brian got close. I really appreciate Brian a lot. Uh, we got a chance to really get to meet, know each other. We always say hi to each other, and we always talk, and it's really good connection. But, man, we just, we, it was like instant. It was like I felt comfortable around him. I felt really good, and um, it, was, it was good. It was really good. But Rudy, um, so in the same way, I was 13 years old when I really got saved, um, and a pastor prophesied over me when I was 13, says, you're going to play worship in all around the world, all around the world, and I was like, cool, at 13 year old, you were like, yeah, heck yeah, I'm going to play worship, and it really hasn't happened, <coughs> excuse me, and it really hasn't happened. Um, I played worship for the first time in 20 years overseas. And I begin to cry that moment. Remember that 13-year-old kid who got a word from the Lord. And uh, I, could, I couldn't contain it. Because in the same way, I count myself out. In the same way, like this guy, um, Stuart, was, taking, was saying, maybe not me. Maybe somebody else. You know, here, like, you know, almost passing the baton, saying, it's not mine to take, it's somebody else's. And I remember that 13-year-old kid who just loved, loved worship. Just loved to play. Didn't care about if he was good or not. <laughs> it was <laughs> offbeat. <laughs> didn't, didn't, he didn't care. He just worshipped. And I remember going up to Rudy and I just said, thanks, man. I appreciate you, bro. And I love you. And I told him, I think it was one of the first times I told Rudy I loved him. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it, <laughs> and uh it was it was special, and uh, I just I just I shared with that with him, and he can hear my heart. And he said, "Man, I this is, this is almost like the first time we've ever shared hearts. I've, I've ever shared my heart with them." And uh, I just am thankful, I'm so grateful for the Lord, what He's gonna do. And so I said, "Okay, God, in the next ten years, like, are we going again?" So I said, "You know, as we were coming back, I was praying and asking the Lord, God, I have ten years of this passport. Come on, send me again. All right, I'll go." My, I guess what the Lord, or like what touched me the most was the youth out there, like everyone my age. I got to know these two um, beautiful girls on Sunday. They, um, they just needed a ride, so they hopped in our van, and um, we went. <laughs> That's literally what happened. They are like, hey, we, we need a ride. Like, can we come with you? And they hopped in, and we, they went to lunch with us, and ended up spending the whole day, and I got really close with them. Um, we ended up going to, like, the old town, um, which has a bunch of shops and stuff. We got cotton candy. We talked a lot, laughed. Um, it was really amazing, and um, that, those girls taught me a lot. Um, like, not only, like, physical stuff. Like, they were teaching me and Chris how to speak Russian, um, which was really cool. And I learned that. They taught me that, too. But um, they taught me a lot, like, like spiritually and, like, um,
these these girls were from the church. We didn't just pick up two random girls in the van. <laughs> I thought I thought I'd share that with you. Yes, uh, one of them, if not both of them, had just given their life to Jesus the night before at the youth conference. Um, and these girls were Ukrainian girls that their their dads, I don't know if both of them, at least one of them, their dads were stuck back in Ukraine. So, um, yeah, fighting in the war. Uh, and Jamie instantly connected to them. And when she first saw the two, she was like, that's me and Maya, you know, them just joking around and... and uh, it was real cute. We went to lunch with the main pastor after, and then the girls asked if she would go sit with them, and and then that was it from there. The whole day they were they were with us. Sorry about the y'all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was gonna say that um, <laughs> um, they they're one of their dads is um, fighting in the war right now, and she's telling me that um, she's been trying to get her mom to church. Um, like for a while now and then um, we ended up exchanging like Instagrams and stuff and she told me yesterday that um, she was telling her mom all about me and like our day and that she's going to go to church on Sunday um, yeah which is really really awesome and um, and we've been talking like about God a lot and um, that she's been, like, depressed and stuff um, because of school. And that that's why she went to the altar was because she, like, kind of, like, got away from God and, like, was, like, pushing him away. And um, she felt, like, pulled to go to the altar and, um, like, kind of rededicate her life. And she went, she was saying she went up for that and just talking to me, um, She's telling me that, like, just speaking to me, like, um, she felt super blessed. And I was, like, she also blessed me a lot, too. And I'm sure Chris also, we, he was, like, the fun uncle for that day, kind of um, making us all laugh. So that, that really touched me a lot. And I also got to pray um, on the first night um, for this group of um, younger girls um, which was really awesome. I got to meet them. So that's probably what touched me the most. Um, and that was also my favorite part was, um, that was Sunday. It was just that whole day was awesome. And the youth conference was really amazing too. Um, just like dancing around, having a lot of fun, um, and seeing all of the, the younger people um, like jumping around and stuff. That was amazing, and um, getting closer with everyone here. Um, uh, like my dad said, the long car rides were, even though they were long and uncomfortable, <laughs> in that co in that little car for hours a day. Um, it was really. <laughs> There's a Red Rider. <laughs> we named our car Red White Red Rider. Um, yeah, she. <laughs> She, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, she gave up on us on the last day, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the long, those <laughs> sorry, she said she stretched her faith. <laughs> sorry, that made me laugh. Um, but being stuck in that little car for hours a day with um like these people we really got we got really close um and got to know a lot about each other rather than just, just saying hi and bye at church it was really really amazing and um i know we're all we're gonna bring this fire back um to church to our church and in california and um keep praying for the people in poland they've they really need it, and they're um, they're desperate for God. I was telling my parents. Sorry, I'm almost done. Um, I was telling my parents that um, it was so cool there, like, because Poland is the most like atheist um, country in the world. But for it being the most um, atheist country, the people are so open and like desperate 
for Jesus. So that was that was really touched me and um and yeah, so keep praying for them. Amen. All right, get the tissues ready, Rudy. <laughs> Cry baby's turn. All right. Um so Poland for me was totally eye opening. Um, I want to thank everybody, um, like they were saying, thank you everyone who supported and financially and praying um, for us and for me, you know, to help me to get there. Um, Poland to me felt very dark. It, it felt like there's so many strongholds there. And um, spiritually, it just was like, whoa, like, you know, like Jamie was saying, there's a lot of atheism there. Um, we had so much opposition, like when we were trying to get to places, um, there was like an accident and it like backed us up. Um, the time that we were on, I think it was the first church we were on our way to, and it, it was like setting us way behind at first. And, um, when we got there, I was just like, I went on this trip, just telling the Lord, like, I'm open God, whatever way you want to use me, um, you know, I'm willing to do whatever, like whatever you want me to do when we're there. And so when we got there, um, some of us were running behind, and we got there, and we were, like, kind of, like, you know, shuffling around to try to get everything going with the worship. But I was there, like, I just came with my camera or whatever. I was, like, I'll just take pictures, whatever. And um, and then, like, at the last minute, right before he started, Bruce was, like, hey, Gina, you want to come up and sing? And I was, like, okay, yeah, like, whatever you want me to do, you know? And um, I was so blessed because... Just the fact that, like, we saw all the people. They were so hungry. Like, they were just, like, desperate for something, you know. I, some of them might not have even realized, like, what they're there to receive, you know. But, like, the presence of God was there so strong in the worship. And then the minute that we started singing in Ukrainian or whatever language I was, oh, my gosh, I just broke. I was like, I'm here in a foreign country, like, singing in a foreign language. Like, I was just, like, it, like, blew me away, like. God is so big, you know, like God is so much bigger than sometimes we make him out to be or sometimes we just think in our own little world, in our own little sphere, you know, and I was just like, dang, like I'm here on the other side of the world worshiping in Ukrainian, like it blew me away, you know, and, and, um, and, and the presence of God was in there so thick and, and the people were just there like receiving God, you know, receiving his presence, receiving, uh, uh, not just in the physical, the food they were getting, but receiving in the spiritual. And, like, it was just, like, overflowing. Like, my heart was so full. And um, and then, you know, getting closer with everybody, like everybody's saying, like, me and Kendra were in the room. <laughs> me and Kendra were in the room, and we were just, like, up every night laughing until, like, 4 in the morning all night. <laughs> like, I had so much fun with her, and I was so blessed. Like, just even getting close to everybody, like, really, you know, I mean, not to say that I didn't feel like we're family, but I feel like we're so much closer as family now. Like, coming to church is just going to be different now, you know? And so much more powerful um, the way that the Lord bonded us in relationships, you know? And so I was super blessed by that. And then, um, what else? Okay, so then another service, um, we went and, you know, uh, Baruch had like a certain, you know, structure um, we were going to go by, right? And then the Holy Spirit just like changed it up. And it broke out into prayer. Sorry, my mouth is so dry. It broke out into prayer. And then all of a sudden, like, they just opened the altar and everybody just went up for prayer, you know. And we just, everybody was just laying hands on somebody, like praying, you know, just like praying it down, you know. And then after the service was done, um, this lady came up at the end and she was crying and she came up to ask for like extra prayer. She wanted, you know, prayer again. And um, the Lord just started showing us, like, things in the spirit. And the lady, God delivered. Like, right then and there, it turned into, like, a full-blown deliverance service for this lady. Like, you know, she was, like, manifesting, physically manifesting. And, and that lady's life is never going to be the same. That lady's life, God sent us all the way to Poland for that lady's life to never be the same again. <laughs> never. And she was set free. Amen. The Lord touched her by his anointing and broke chains for eternity in her life. And that was just, like, so impactful. And um, 
So that was like one of the biggest things for me also. And then we went to the park. We went to the park and prayed for people in the park. And um, it was crazy because sometimes you would, uh, we would, we tried to like pass out flyers. And a lot of, I mean, the people were very open. Don't get me wrong. But when, it was like as soon as they see the flyer, I don't know if it's like they knew it was like a church or what. But a lot of times they saw the flyer and they were like, no, no, like, oh, no. Or like, you know, just kind of like sta- a lot of them were standoffish. Um, but when we kind of like didn't come out with like Pastor Joey that was there with us, he was like, maybe if we just try to shake their hand, just try to talk to them first and not give them a flyer right away. Let's see what that does, you know. So we did that, and, and there was so many people that were open. Um, I don't know if they have a pic. Well, I don't know how they're doing it, but there was a satanic, like, demonic couple, like, satanic or whatever. And they were, like, all dressed, you know, like, dressed all satanic. And, um, and we, we walked up to them. They were young, like, I don't know, maybe teenagers, I'm thinking. And we walked up to them, and Pastor Joey started talking to him, talking to the guy. And you would think, and right away I saw, like, his, his lip, like, curled up, like he was angry, you know. And the Lord showed me as Pastor Joy was talking to, talking to him that he had so much rejection, you know, and, and that's why he was so angry at God. And so um, we started praying for him as him and his girlfriend. And but, but what I noticed is that even though he had, you know, that sense of rejection or he had his issues and stuff, he let us talk to him. He let us talk to them, you know, and God had opened the door and... Um, and they let us pray for them. Like, he could have said no, you know. Like, we were like, hey, can we pray for you guys, him and his, his little girlfriend. And, and he said yes. And um, just the fact that he said yes was like, man, like, you're here, God. You know, like, you're able to do anything. You're going to, God was going to do what he, God was going to do because God had a plan. And, um, and they let us pray for them. And then we prayed for some more young people. And it was just powerful because... There was a few kids, they accepted the Lord in, there in the park. And, and it's just crazy, like, to see, like, like they were kind of sharing, like, what they've, they've been through, you know. And just that people are hurt. People are out there broken, you know. And I feel like the, the biggest thing I got overall was the need is so big. And the Bible says that the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. And, you know, we really need to open our hearts in these last days to just be used by God. Because there's so many people out there that are broken, that are hurting, that are just down and out, that are just ready to end it all, you know, ready to take their lives. And so if there's anything that I could leave, you know, is, is let's capture the heart of God for the broken and, and for the need. Amen. But I was so blessed by this trip. My life is never going to be the same. Amen. Watch your piano, bro. Um, hi, I'm Kendra. Um, oh, hi. Jean Dobre. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, I've been blessed from the moment I found out about this trip. Uh, I believe it was Roxy reached out to me and she was like, uh, we want to open this opportunity for you to go out on a missions trip. Um, and I was like, okay. And she was like, all right, so pray about it. And I was like, no, I, I said, okay. Um, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> do what you got to do. I don't know what paperwork you got to put in, but put me in. <laughs> And uh, she was like, okay, well, just pray about it. I was like, girl, I'm trying to live my faith. (laughs) Um, And so I signed up for this trip really by faith with, I don't want to say no expectation because the last missions trip that I went on was to Nicaragua and my life will never be the same. Um, But I signed up not really, I feel, I've signed up in a good place, you know, Um, I signed up and and I was like, okay, here I go to be a blessing and, and, you know, whatever the Lord wants to do, I'm I'm in a a place right now where I can can go and go into all the world how God has commissioned us. Um, So we spent months of preparation and I know for a lot of us it was really by faith because uh, the finances sometimes just don't seem to be there and God just provided for all of us, but specifically, I'm blown away by how God provided for me. I that that's been the biggest impact. That when you say yes to God, He goes above and beyond in His yes to you. And so, Amen. <laughs> and uh, this entire trip, I, I even on the 52-hour plane ride over there, um, I was like, God, 
what are we doing? What am I doing? Why am I here? Who are these people? Like, and I don't mean the Ukrainian, Polish people. I mean, literally the people sitting, I don't know any of them. Um, I had like a, you know, I, I mean, I know Brian, know Chris too well, uh, know Jamie, Uncle Joe over here. Um, know Gina, cause we're on a team together. I don't know, I didn't know Cruz. <laughs> I didn't, I thought I knew Cruz, but I didn't know Cruz, trust. Um, and so I, you know, I, Marcella is my best friend, but at the same time, you just feel like, okay, God, but this is like one mighty mix of people who, who what are we all doing here? What's, what's my purpose? You know, I'm st- like, you know, I'm not, I don't consider myself like a worship leader when I'm standing next to Cruz, you know, I don't consider myself a photographer when I'm standing next to Gina. I, like I, I don't consider myself young when I'm standing next to Jamie. I don't consider myself strong standing next to Uncle Joe. You know, <laughs> like uh, there, I, I felt like um, I didn't feel like enough. I didn't feel like enough going in when I signed up. I didn't think that God could use me or that there was a mission out there for me. I was just going by faith. And, um, and I don't know, I was going because I told Jamie I would go and I love her. <laughs> um, but when we got out there, even in the plane ride, I was like, okay, God, like, it's crazy because, no, I'm sorry, not even the plane ride, Sunday, I just couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop thanking God. It was Easter Sunday. We left the day after Easter Sunday, the day after resurrection, the day after we celebrate the risen Lord. The fact that not only did he finish it on the cross, but then he rose again three days later, finishing, coming, bringing to completion what he said he would do. And then he commissioned us to go out and do it. And so here we are fulfilling that commission, you know. And so I just couldn't stop crying. I was at Amazon Fresh, like bawling like a baby, trying to get my snacks. <laughs> and you could you could tell Gina I'd brought too many snacks. I thought I was going to be hungry. <laughs> but but I wasn't. Um, and so we went out there and I just had a, a, an incredible time. I mean, I didn't do anything that I expected to be doing. I brought my camera and I was out here playing photographer <laughs> uh, for the weekend. Um, there was a lot of, of waiting and I just was like, I'm gonna be honest, I, I, I was like, God, why are we waiting so much? Like there's, there's a lot of like just, okay, like I just wanna get to the church or I just wanna start praying or I just, I feel like I should be doing something. I feel like I should be moving and in motion and 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 Jesus was like, do you know how long it took me to get from city to city? <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't have a car. <laughs> Even if it was red and falling apart, hallelujah, I didn't have a car. Like, And, and so um, I think it wasn't till the last day where I just felt like I realized, I guess, we were the mission. It wasn't, we weren't going out to fulfill a mission. We were the mission that was needing to be fulfilled. I think it wasn't by coincidence that a good huge portion of the worship team was um, uh, sent out onto this missions trip or into this missions field. Um, we got to know each other like crazy well. I, I don't, Cruz is literally hilarious, <laughs> uh, very funny, get to know him. Um, <laughs> you know, Gina, she's over here like praying down the house and I'm like, girl, I gotta sleep. <laughs> um, she prays in her sleep, hallelujah. Um, Jamie, you know, so talented, just such a heart for people. Uncle Joe, like the, the literal protector and like guider, but you know, Chris, amazing heart for people. Brian, just a watchman, like that's who he is. I never felt safer in my life. I'm sorry, whoever we left here. <laughs> um, but 
I was just so thankful for, for us being the mission field and that God felt it so important that he was like, you know what, I need to send these people to another country where they're not working, where she's not blowing up balloons. Not that those things are bad things. Work needs to be done and, and work is an excellent thing. You know, we work in excellence unto the Lord, but sometimes when we're moving so quickly, we don't realize um, who it is that we are working with. And when you love the people that you're working with, it doesn't, it feels like, man, that's something that I want to want to be a part of, not something that I need to do or something that I'm obligated to do, but something that I have a, a, a desire to do. I want to change the world with these people. I want to impact the kingdom of God with these people. And so we went on this incredible missions trip. Oh, I got a word too. That was incredible. I was just sitting there minding my business. Um, but the Lord said, this is your business now. <laughs> and uh, I got a word, and that was incredible. I don't know if he was just, like, handing them out, but I got one, so <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, and, yeah, I just got to capture memories, and I think that's important, too. Nothing that we do for the kingdom of God is unimportant, and that's what I realized. Like, you may think you're playing a small role in the kingdom, but he says we are the body of Christ. So I don't care if you're a hair follicle in the kingdom of God or, <laughs> trust me, if you don't have hair, that hair is important. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I don't know if you're a nail bed, if you feel like you're a nail bed in the kingdom of God, but have you ever been missing a nail? Like, it's painful. It hurts. And, and you can't function correctly without every part of the body. And I'm sure you experience that on this side, um, you know, with, with worship being different, with, uh, you know, people who normally serve in the house, that's different. Um, so, yeah, I think those were my biggest takeaways from this trip were that, that we were the mission field and we had the opportunity to grow closer to one another and, and um, find out um, just who each other are. And so I'm so thankful for this experience. I'm so incredibly thankful for everyone who invested in me, um, whether it was a prayer, $25 or $200. I am forever indebted for, for, for what you gave, not me, but what you gave the kingdom of God so that we could go out there and impact the world. Um, what a blessing. Um, I think a lot's been set up here. Um, and I know that, that God is speaking to us through these testimonies. He's speaking to me, hearing everybody speak. My heart just swells with gratitude. And um, I just want to also just tell our pastors, thank you for giving us the grace to go and giving your blessing because your blessing was upon us and God's blessing was upon us. And um, I'm just so grateful for that. And um, I want to get to the good part, but I think like we were we were uh, confronted with a lot of resistance. Even even that flight from L.A. to Munich, um, it was delayed because of the weather. There was really terrible weather and a lot of turbulence. And um, I, a few of us spoke about that. That there was a lot of resistance because wherever wherever our feet touched, uh, souls were changed, lives were saved. God sent us to send us six thousand miles overseas to change lives and impact people. Even even as small as eating cotton candy with Jamie, um, if there was a bigger impact more than the, the fellowship. I think these girls saw a ray of hope that there's more to God's kingdom than church, than attending church and being there, but building relationships and affecting change in people's lives. And that was so beautiful to see. So wherever we went, Everybody, you know what, I, I kind of, what, what I began to see was, like, from Brian all the way, all the way across to, to me, it was like God began to manifest himself in everybody's life, in their giftings. You, you saw the gifting, like, like Brian said, that blessed my heart, like, when we're in that second um, event. Brian, right away, the children started putting stickers on his face, and he was running around with them, and you could just, there was such a joy but, but Brian brought that atmosphere because he loves children. And you know what's amazing that, uh, oh, man, my, my, I feel God's presence right now. Like what was so beautiful is that he was so concerned about his family. You know, he would say, man, I'm just worried about, you know, my son and, you know, my wife. And, and 
and, and God took care of them, you know, while you were there. But the beautiful thing was that despite all that, you still poured your love on those broken children that don't have a father. And you were a father to them in that moment. And God used you to impact those children's lives. And I was, I was just so blessed. And then to see Chris playing the drums. Um, oh, man, I don't want to cry. I'm not a crier. Like, and that's, like, God did something to me because I, I cried over there too. And I, I don't, I'm not an emotional guy. I'm, I've never, well, maybe when I was younger, but I'm not an emotional guy. But, you know, the, the, what I feel right now, it's, it's, it's God's presence. And it, it, it's God just reminding me how faithful he is. And, and to see Chris functioning in, in the drums, playing, he inspired, he was a little celebrity out there. <laughs> When people were seeing him play, they were like, they, they were all coming up to him like, hey, let me take a picture. Like, he, he was a rock star in, in that. I, it, it was so cool to see that, you know. And, and I was so happy for him. And when he shared that story with me, I, I, was, I was celebrating with him. I was like, what a, man, God is so faithful to see that. And, and seeing Pastor Joe just moving his authority as a pastor out there and, and bringing structure and order and, and helping keep us together and unified and I did mention how Jamie was functioning in a gift. And then Gina was over there rebuking demons. And um, it, it was so powerful. And, 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 and the devil was mad because immediately after that, her, her bank account got hacked. So, so she, she, couldn't, she couldn't touch her funds. And, we, you know, some of us came together. We wanted to bless her. And, you know, we took care of her. And then testimony is that, if you don't mind me saying, she got, she got back and, and her, her funds were returned to her bank account. But, but the devil was mad because... She was affecting change through her prayers. The, the, the power and the anointing of God was on her in such a way that she was walking in boldness and authority. And the devil, the devil wanted to hit her where, where it hurt. But she didn't lose her victory. She, she celebrated and you even saw her on that, that reel where she was raised, like dancing on a little spinning thing. And, and that had just happened. And she was like, I'm just going to worship Jesus, you know. And then, and then, you know, I, I really thank God that um, God, God did that. And also, Kendra, just she's, she has such a heart for the Lord. And, and just seeing how, how God w really used her out there and to sing and to, to pray over people. And uh, the, the heart that she has for God is, is so, so precious. And I know that God has a, a great calling for her life out here. And um, so... For me, it wasn't so much, I, I wasn't really impacted by, if I'm being honest, like being on stage, I, that for me was, okay, cool. That was just an auxiliary to the overall plan. Um, I was able to connect with people out there musically, and um, I think, um, and I said with, with a lot of humility, I was able to impact a lot of the musicians out there. They shared with me, one of the, one of the uh, his name was, uh, what was his name, the, the bass player? Vlad, but I was gonna say Ivan. It's, it was Vlad. Ivan was a sound guy, but but Vlad was like, he was like, he told me on on the service after he's like, you're always happy, and and I was like, what? you're not. He's like, but he's like, he goes, he goes when you walked into that room that day because we rehearsed in a studio. He goes when you walked into the room, he goes like you changed the atmosphere, and and he goes when you begin to just speak and. The way you played, and he even told me after the rehearsal, he's like, as long as I know, like, because it was, it was, you know, it was a little, psych not psychotic, but it was crazy, like, just the way, we didn't have enough time to rehearse, it was just, you know, how, how it is. But he tells me, he tells me, I, if you're up there on the stage, I know we're going to be okay. He goes, because I know you're going to hold this together. Um, but then on Sunday, he told me, you know, when you, when you, um, when you begin to do what you do, you change the atmosphere. And... And he goes, and I, I was really blessed by that. And I said, you know what? I said, and you can do the same out here too. Because when the anointing of God is on you and you are so in love with Jesus, you share that love and it's, it's contagious. And I told him, and you can bring that here. And, and, I, and I just, you know, I, I blessed them and we, we, we embraced. Um, so for me, it, it, to encapsulate that, that was my experience. But m what impacted me the most was the moments that we were together, um, there was one night in particular where, um, you know, I've been through a lot in life. I've been through a lot of uh, changes and ups and downs and um, coming to Firehouse. God's really been doing a work in my life. He's really been, he's just been operating in my heart. Um, 
on the inside out. And I just, I want more of God in my life. I, I want more, I want more of his prayer. I, I, I want, I need him. And when we're out, there, when we're in, in, the, in the hotel room, we all, we all say, hey, let's, let's hang out and let's, let's just, you know, let's eat. But after we ate, we begin to, you know, chat and um, it just turned into like a prayer, a prayer, a, a night of prayer. It wasn't planned. And it was KFC in prayer. Uh, yeah, it, it was, it's, it, over there, their KFC and McDonald's are like, they're like, they're like, um, they're fancy. They're, they're, they're all, they're, that's all everybody eats out there. But, you know, when you have McDonald's, they bring, they serve you on a plate with a glass. Yeah, the, the, they have like a whole bakery out there. It's pretty cool. Um, but just seeing everybody functioning in their gifts, I, I felt so, so burdened for my church. This is my church. My house is my, it's, it's our church. And I said, Lord, I was, I was um, in, my, in my heart, I was saying like, Lord, I was like, God, do that in our church, Lord, that we would feel that fire for you, Lord, in such a way that the way we feel burdened for the people in Poland, God, the, the people without fathers, the people without, without finances, that we would feel the same burden here in, in Brea, California. That we would feel the same for those that are, that are broken, God. And that it would, it would, like Jamie said, that it would be contagious. And that other people would be compelled to carry that, that burden too. And so as we were praying, Gina, Gina gave me a word. She's like, um, she read a scripture. I don't remember it word per word, but uh, can, you, do you, can you cite it again? Through song, right? It was and leads the people out in singing. And for a long time, I I had shut my my mind to writing music and you know creating music. And like I I just felt like to share that with the team, like man, like I had been shut off to that for a long time. And um, but I felt like God was steering my heart again because my intent, my my motives back then weren't right. But now my motives are, God, I, I want your people to get closer to you, God. I want people to have an encounter with you in such a way that their lives are transformed, God. And, and, and like, Lord, give me, give me songs. Give me lyrics that are going to lead your people into your presence, that are going to impact the generation. And when she gave me that word, I felt like something was released. And, and I just, I, I began to just break. I, I, I broke down. And we all just had a moment with the Lord. And um, I say all that to say that. God is going to do great things in this church. I really believe that we've, we've been through a lot. We've been through a, a, a turbulent season with all the changes. But God will be glorified through this all. God, God is going to be magnified. And I just want to encourage you, you know, if, if you're here right now and, and you feel like the fire that's inside of you has dwindled because of all the changes or maybe personal things that you've been through, um, I want to just encourage you to fan the flame that's inside of you. Fan the flame because, amen, give the Lord a hand. I want to encourage you and I want to tell you that the work that you've done for the Lord is not in vain. And, and we, we come back challenged and, and we're ready, Pastor. We're ready to do whatever it takes to build this ministry for God's glory and God's honor. You have my hands and I know that I can speak for everybody. We're, we're ready and willing to do whatever it takes to glorify God's name and and uh um you know let, let's let's stay encouraged guys and you know also too like I was telling Pastor Joe that maybe we can't go to Poland but maybe one day in the future we can do something close like something like in TJ where we go and we pray over people we feed them and you know meet the need there or even locally you know meet the go into the inner city here in this area and you know just share God's love and it's not so that we can grow the church and so we can get, like, God will do that. But it's more that we have the heart and we feel the, 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 that our heart breaks for the things that break God's heart. That we would say, man, God sees the, the single mom there. God sees that, that kid that's about to commit suicide and, 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 and a group of people that went beyond themselves that said, you know, it's not about my desires. It's not about my will. It's not about what I want, God, but I surrender my will to you, Father. 
And I will do what it takes, Lord, to give you glory and give you honor. When we go into those places, God is, God is blessed. And he, and he touches his people. And so that mission trip ignited a fire inside of me that it's not about, it's more, it goes beyond the stage. It goes beyond the, you know, the day-to-day -day in the church. But it's about loving on people that are, that are loveless, that haven't, been, that haven't been loved on. It's about caring for those that nobody's ever even cared to offer a hug or a cheeseburger. But simply do something so small like that. And God really worked on us, man. God, God really did a work, and I think that he's going to continue to work. And, you know, I just want to encourage the team up here to um, keep, keep that shine. Like, don't, don't let the circumstances of the day-to-day -day back here, you know, dwindle that shine. Because, um, you know, we, we sowed something into God's kingdom, but in turn, God sowed something into us. So we got to let it flourish because um, the world needs it. The world needs that. He needs us, and he needs you. And um, that's, that's all I got to say about that. I don't know if there's. Hey, man. Uh, you know, I, I think we just flew in last night. We got in last night, and I think some of us are still trying to wrap our heads around everything. Um, none of these words and these testimonies, like, words can't express what happened out there. Uh, it really, it's going to hold a special place in my heart. And I know you guys all feel the same way. Um, so we were honored to, uh, to be out there. And I know we're, we're running a little over, but before we end, I would encourage any of you guys to go on, on a missions trip in the future when it's, when it's you know, available, when the opportunity comes. And if anybody has that in their heart that, that they want to, you know, possibly in the future go on one of these or, or needs, needs a fire lit in them, to, to do more things with God. We want you to come up right now before we end. And, and us as a team, we want to pray for you um, before this service is over. But I, I do want to thank you for, for all supporting us. And again, to give back, we want to pray for you guys as well. So if we could have whoever wants to come up, come up for, for prayer. Church, extend your hands. Stand with me and extend your hands and let's pray. These are people that came forward in our church and say, yes, I want to make a difference. If you're here and you say, you know what, I, I'm, I would like to pray about going on a missions trip and make an impact in another country where they're calling us out. Come forward. We want to pray with you. They're laying hands on you. They're going to give you an impartation of what the Lord did in their lives while they were there. Anyone else? No matter what your age, no matter... No matter who you are, if you have that desire, God's putting it in your heart. Say, maybe I can get out there and go on a missions trip. We want you to come forward and get prayed for.
quickly, I just want to pray. I know you're praying still, but I want to pray this. I, God just put this in my heart. Father, I pray for everyone up here that wants to go on a mission trip. I pray that you give them money in advance, Father, in their bank accounts, so that when the call is called out to go and to touch another place, they would have the finances, Lord. Start now, God, bringing in those finances because I really believe, Lord, that you want us to touch the nations. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. gathering is tomorrow at 7 p.m. in the Shiloh. We have Pastor Lucy from PC East LA giving a word. Her message is titled Love, Love, Love. So grab a sister and bring a snack or appetizer and join us for a great time in the Lord. Also on Sunday, April 28th, we have a child dedication. And if you need to sign up and need more information, you can go to the Connection Center. Also, a reminder for those who signed up to take the CPR class, um, this class is happening this Sunday after service, so don't forget that. Um, and that's it. Uh, can we get the ushers, please? What an awesome testimony. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're truly grateful for the opportunity that you have given us tonight, Father. We ask that you will bless this offering, Father. Further for your kingdom, Father. We ask that you will bless your people. We give you all the praise and honor and glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Fernando. Wasn't it great to hear from the uh, team? <laughs> 